Hi friends, today we are going to discuss about introduction to object oriented programming. That is, what object oriented programming is, definitions, and exactly what it has in itself. So, that is to be discussed in this chapter that is called as introduction to object oriented programming. First, let me tell you about myself. My name is Shasha Chaturvedi and I've done my B.Tech in Information and Technology from University College of Engineering, Rajasthan Technical University, Kota. My places of interest are basketball, that is playing basketball, movies, watching movies like Hollywood movies basically and computer gaming. Moreover, I play it on PlayStation as well. I've attended two national sports meets in basketball one was held in Nagpur and one was held in Jaipur now let's move on and see what we are going to discuss today that is introduction to OOP or introduction to object oriented programming let me specify it that we are basically reading these lessons to enhance our knowledge about how to program in OOP and specifically discussing it in C++. Now, the first part will be introduction to OOP. The second part will be programming methodology and then the features of OOP. What features it has and all these quoted are the features like flowchart flowchart in it has the basic structure how it goes on then it is classes and objects encapsulation and data hiding data abstraction inheritance polymorphism generic programming object binding and reusability we're going to discuss all of this but only the basic things right now now let's start introduction to oop or what exactly OOP is. Object oriented programming is the new way of thinking about various real world entities. As we can see this. See, we can know about it on larger scale and deeply by using OOP. The fundamental entities of the program construct is the object containing both data structure and its behavior as a single entity. This line means that we are going to know the basic, the basic attributes or the basic things or the basic knowledge we should have about any program is the object. It contains both data structure and its behavior as a single entity. Now, OOP is attempts to fit the language to the problem. OOP basically tries to summarize it all up and fit it into the language for the programming. OOP basically emphasizes on the use of data rather than trying to fit the procedural approach of a language. Now, let's move ahead and see what programming methodology exactly is. You can read the definition right here that what programming methodology is that this is the basic idea of how do we write the programs. Fine. You can see it all here ki we need block of codes, few basic software skills, unit required, our data structures, algorithms, hardware and software interaction, and the end user. This is all to be discussed in this. But there are mainly two types of programming methodologies. That is top down approach and bottom up approach. A top-down approach is essentially the breaking down of a system to gain insight or 
to gain knowledge about it into its compositional subsystems in a reverse engineering fashion. That is, we go from the top to the bottom most part. Now, we'll, we'll know about it when we do it. When we program anything, we come to know that we are going from the highest point to the lowest point that is a top down approach and we'll come to, we'll have the knowledge about the subsystems in it or what are what are the components of the program but that too in a reverse engineering method that is reverse mechanism is used what is bottom up approach as we can see the method of programming where basic building blocks are first created and the code is being implemented. But what exactly this line means? We can see it here. We can read it. But what does this mean? You know, if we are generating the code such that we write an appropriate algorithm, then locate the record and define the key to search and then implement the function. Such method of programming is called as the bottom up approach. Now we have the basic knowledge about how do we write the program and what is the programming methodology and what exactly OOP is. Now let's see and move ahead and know more about the features of OOP. You know before writing the code and before writing the syntax we should know the what exactly oop is composed of and what are the features and how vibrantly we can use this or this can be a basic knowledge of writing down the program and algorithms so the basic features of oop are as you can see, there is a flowchart given, the features of OOP, the classes and objects, encapsulation and data hiding, data abstraction, inheritance, polymorphism, generic programming, object binding and reusability, where inheritance has five other subparts that to be single inheritance, hierarchical inheritance, multi-level inheritance, multiple inheritance, hybrid inheritance and compile time inheritance, sorry compile time polymorphism is the part of polymorphism and runtime polymorphism and moreover object binding has two subparts as well, early binding and late binding. This is the basic knowledge or the basic flowchart we are going to discuss about in the features of OOP. Now let's move ahead and first see what classes and objects are. Objects are the real world entities. For example, we come to know about things like the things which we can touch are to be treated as the object of the program or felt like air we can feel air so this is the object of our life now you can relate it with the life so the things which we can touch and feel are the objects like trees air many more things so these are the objects of life similarly we have objects in programming the things that can be felt are the objects or the real world entities like a uh, part of program that is relatable to the real world. Class in whole is like a template or I must say it's the blueprint which unites the knowledge with the methodology you know, you're getting my point that we are basically uniting or we are basically joining the two different aspects that is the data 
and the methods that basic now that comes down to abstraction of the or the summary of the real world entities now we have attributes that what is the function and what are the features that are to be said in attributes now operation it can be defined as the methods through which the objects like addition multiplication these are the things that are that makes these valid so this is classes and objects then encapsulation and data heading encapsulation is like we are putting the data in a capsule and we are limiting its uh, reach to the user only or the developer only and it has it has been kept secured from the external access data hiding is more or less the same similar thing but it is completely hiding the data from external access or various attributes from mother we are hiding many of the attributes from the external access this is data hiding now data abstraction we are summarizing the data so we are creating a class so that is data abstraction as the name suggests data abstraction data plus abstraction abstract is summary and data is the knowledge the basic knowledge so data abstraction inheritance it's uh, in biology we study the genetics our father gives us the uh, genes so those are the we get it from our father and mother so that is inheritance we are inheriting the uh, same features as our mother and father so that is inheritance now in the programming also we inherit some knowledge from one class from one parent class to the child class here we have said it to be the super class and the derived class there are different kinds of inheritance there are mainly five kind single inheritance hierarchical inheritance multi level inheritance multiple inheritance and hybrid inheritance we are going to discuss it in detail uh, afterwards polymorphism if we are using some operation operational or operator in different ways like we are using the same sign for two operations like if we are using the plus like this we are using this minus sign for addition as well and for the subtraction as well or for uh, another things so that is called as polymorphism or we can see the definition right here there are two types of polymorphism the compile time polymorphism and the run time polymorphism compile time is while we are compiling the program and run time is while we are writing the program now generic programming defines the implementation strategy where rather writing code for specific data value we emphasize writing code for general we basically generalize the whole concept and we don't write it for specific things so this is called as the generic program programming object binding object binding is the concept of linking various variables or methods with the programs now we can bind things so that is binding of the concept of linking various variables so that is binding can be classified as early binding or late binding early binding be in the run time and compile uh, time be late binding reusability if we are reusing the code again and again if we are using the code again and again we would have to write it where the developer would be tired of it so for that we have used the feature of oop that is called as reusability reusability means developer need not write the same code again and again that is all for the features and the introduction for the object oriented programming thank you and please don't forget to rate review and subscribe and follow me as well thank you